Morning Tobago on Tobago Updates, your source for current affairs in Tobago, Trinidad, and the region. With a perfect conversation to complement your morning routine, I am Candace Jackson, and let's get started with the news in 90 seconds. There was a heated exchange of words between Chief Secretary Fali Augustin and Minority Leader Kelvon Morris at the plenary sitting yesterday. The drama unfolded when Morris rose to speak on a motion related to partnerships for the protection of vulnerable women. He started criticizing the presiding officer for what he felt was a chaotic management of the House when Augustine rose on a point of order to suggest Morris was imputing improper motives against the presiding officer. After calling the House to order, Augustine was seen leaving the chamber, as he indicated during his presentation to attend a function, when Morris shouted at him, saying to call the elections now. The house was suspended and the presiding officer called Morris into a meeting. It appeared as if the heated emotions and harsh words continued in that meeting because when the sitting resumed, the presiding officer read a statement saying she felt unsafe by Morris's reactions and, caused, and cautioned the house against such behaviors. Meanwhile, the cabinet approved the full proclamation of the Public Procurement and Disposal of Property Act No. 1 of 2015. It will take effect from Wednesday, 26 April 2023. Since the procurement legislation was passed in Parliament in 2015, only portions of the Act were implemented. The Act allows for greater levels of accountability from public servants and provides transparency for government's actions. And that was your news in 90 seconds. And viewers, like I said, we've got a lot happening in our space, you know. It seems as though this Tobago's never short of a little bit of back and all. But we're moving right along to our first guest this morning, who is Mr. Darren Dehore. Hopefully I got that name correct. And he is the founder of CyberSafe TNT. Good morning and welcome to you. Hi, good morning. All right. So give me, first of all, um, you know, what are some of the, the things that we need to keep in mind as people, you know, as citizens, when we think about our cyber safety, our safety online? Yeah, so we, we tend to let our guards down when we are interacting on the social media space and online in general, and often share far too much information uh, for the general public to see. So simple things as, you know, keeping your phone numbers and email addresses hidden, uh, even simple things as your house address, some individuals post of that, um, thinking that they need it to register on sites when you don't really need, you know, to enter all of that information. Um, recently, we would have seen a lot of images being uploaded with house numbers and vehicle numbers. All of these are called personal identifiable information and it's something that you know um, uh, an unsuspecting person could could start to correlate and correlate and, and, and build your own profile so you know you might be thinking well on Facebook all I have is my my phone number and on Instagram all I have is is, is uh, an email address but individuals will actually scour the internet and look at all the Facebook profiles all the Instagram profiles all the social media profiles and build your own uh, database of, of, you know, your full information. So we tend to give away a lot, too much mm. sometimes. How prevalent is uh, these cases here in Trinidad and Tobago? Are we seeing a rise of it? Because we know, like, when you look at some places, like some of the first world uh, countries, they, they, there is that, that major problem. But is it, how big of a problem is it for us here in Trinidad and Tobago? Well, we are actually not very different. We are actually quite unique in some cases. Uh, many uh, professors from London and Europe study Trinidad and Tobago. Uh, we actually have one of the highest per capita Facebook user accounts in the world. 
Um, that's quite interesting. Uh, when I found out that about six years ago, so it would have only increased. Um, we also have a very high penetration of internet connectivity, whether it is on your mobile phone or at your house. And that, of, of course, would, would, in, would mean that, you know, we also have a lot of uh, internet connected accounts. So we are there actually probably higher than what you might refer to as the first world countries in terms of interactivity on social media. You would have probably also heard in the past a really unfortunate statistic about our use of pornographic material on yeah. online. So it also goes to show that, you know, we have so much people connected and we are, you know, looking at all of the bad things and all of the wrong things as well. So we are just, you know, uh, up, up there with the rest of the world. No, we know, well, I'm not sure if the public is generally aware of this, but, you know, like things like your IP address and so on can be traced very easily through your Facebook user, use, usage, as well as, you know, um, whatever you're on Instagram or all, across all these social media networks. How do you protect yourself from being traced by the wrong persons um, that may be trying to steal your identity and so on? Right. So, you know, technology has improved and also security has improved. So I, I would probably correct you just a slight bit. It's not that easy to get your IP address, but I can tell you what is very easy. Location tracking you know, or GPS location. Now, all of our phones have, you know, location and, and it's what we use to check in to say, hey, we visited this place. Um, and it's also used by most of these um, mobile devices to, to, to curate ads um, to you. So, you know, you might find yourself driving down Port of Spain uh, or Scarborough and all of a sudden you see um, an ad related to a business that's in the, in, in the vicinity. And that's GPS tracking, you know, working for you. Now, that might benefit you, but then you have the downside of it, right, where you actually, you know, share your location with individuals and you tell unsuspecting folks where you are. So location and GPS tracking is something that's enabled by default. To be honest, if you if you're a young person, you could disable those things because yeah. it is a security risk. Unless if you absolutely need, uh, you know, to use it for an app, you can use it during uh, while you're using the app. So, for example, um, Google Maps or Apple Maps. You know, when you're actually trying to get navigation, you need to have the GPS turned on. Uh, but otherwise, you know, really and truly, you don't need to have that location information shared because that's something that can definitely pinpoint your location at any point and then on the, on the flip side of that you can actually use that in a positive way if you have to lose your device you could always <laughs> use it best you know location to to find the device so you have to to weigh you know the technology with the current situation that we're in um and see what works best for you in terms of you know uh, you know we, we talk amongst ourselves that Google is always listening or some of these, uh, the big brother, in a sense, is always listening because when you look sometimes on social media, you might be having a conversation, private conversation amongst you and your friends, and then you see ads coming up for the very thing that you were, you were, you were um, speaking about and you wonder how, how is this possible? I mean, yeah, you what, know, what information can you share where that is concerned? That is probably one of the most scariest things ever because I've I've experienced it first and so many times that it just it's it's mind boggling sometimes. So the devices are listening. I actually have an article about this on Cyber Safe TT. Um, what I can say is your data or, or your app based uh, call application such as uh, WhatsApp Voice. Right? When you make a call on WhatsApp voice or use Messenger voice, uh, I have actually seen Fusan where the information that is shared there is sometimes um, you know, perpetuated on, 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 your, on, your, um, on your browser, on your email, you might get an ad. Mm -hmm. um, yes, I definitely think that they are listing, they're tracking and recording everything that you do. And it is touted to give you a better user experience, right? But sometimes we wouldn't know if that's really the best user experience. So um, I've actually turned off, you know, um, these voice assistants on my phone, on my devices, um, particularly at home. You know, I've, I've, I've always told my wife, the minute we speak about buying a new blender in the kitchen and I see an ad for it in my email, I'm going to throw away all of my internet connected devices. Uh, because, yeah, I think that's where we're probably heading. Yeah. Well, recently we've had the prevalence of fake profiles and it seems as though our, some of our older population, they're the ones that get trapped with this. How do we, how do we be able to spot it and then what, what can you do about it? 
Yeah, I mean, the technology is, is, is so amazing now. And it's not just the older folks, it's everyone. Even mm -hmm. I can get duped sometimes, you know. Um, so you have these fake profiles. You also have phishing emails, which, you know, has become so sophisticated. And there is something called deep fakes. Uh, you could Google up that and, you know, probably become so, so, you know, scared as to what can really happen. A deep fake is, it could be a video of me, but saying something that I actually never said, right? Um, so fake profiles, let's stick to that particular topic. It's been something that's you know quite rampant. It's very easy to do uh, for someone who wants to try and either annoy someone or harass someone yeah. or pretend to be another person. And that's a form of cyberbullying. Um, we do actually have laws that could sort of deal with it under the Offenses Against a Persons Act. So if you're actually uh, you know, pretending to, to be someone and causing reputational damage to that person, uh, you know they can take you to court under the Offenses Against a Persons Act. But what we have to be uh, mindful of as a public, if someone is pretending to be your friend, for example, they may be asking you questions, uh, what might seem to be personal questions, and you might think to yourself, shouldn't they already know this? Hmm. You know, they wouldn't probably ask you, uh, so what's your phone number? I think I lost it. You know, you might be, think to yourself that these are things that, and information that they may already know. So if you find that it's too prying and I'm, I'm you know, becoming a little too private, uh, you might want to wonder whether or not it is that person. And, you know, the good old school way of solving that always works. Pick up your phone and call them and say, hey, did you contact me on social media? You know, don't try to engage them right in the same space that they are trying to trick you on because they, are, they have answers for everything. Certainly. And if you find yourself caught in such a situation, what action can you take? Can you go to the police and have the police been able to, you know, get to the bottom of some of these things? Yes. So the first and foremost thing is report it to the platform. Um, I've seen, you know, pretty decent response from the platform only when uh, they actually get a volume of reports. So you as self alone reporting, it is probably going to be way, way, way low down in the queue. You need to get your friends to report, your family to report, a lot of individuals to see that this is a fake profile, report the profile, and then the platform will take some action. Remember, they're dealing with billions of queries on a daily basis, right? So you have to come pretty, <laughs> pretty good. Uh, the cybercrime unit has been, you know, uh, good in terms of responding to the claims that would have dealt with um, defamation of character, uh, reputational damage, you know, um, verbal abuse, cyberbullying, these type of things. Uh, so you need to keep your evidence, screenshots, do video recordings um, that would help build your case, uh, especially if it is threatening to you. If it's if someone actually threatens to harm you on online, um, the recommendation is to go immediately to your nearest police station and make a report because it is similar to someone actually coming to your home and making a threat. Um, and they can actually also send that uh, report over to the cybercrime unit. Uh, but yes, treat it as a criminal offense. Um, the same way in which you would report a crime, you do the same thing for an online offense. Mm -hmm. Now, when we think about, you know, sharing our lives online, I mean, we live, we live so much online, we share so much online, and, it was, we, and we're thinking about, you know, just even what should we share and what should we not share. And in terms of pictures and videos, you know, we're so... I mean, no matter sometimes something is happening or you just want to say something, you want to take a picture or a video, but you're not sure that, you, I mean, you might be putting yourself at a risk because of certain things that might be in your background. What should we be keeping in mind when we choose to share uh, pictures and videos online? Well, what we should keep in mind is who's going to see it, right? And, uh, you know, the article that I wrote recently about, you know, checking your friends list. Uh, over time, we add folks, we add individuals to our friends list, and we might be friends with them at that time. That might have been five, ten years ago. But now, you may not necessarily be friends, but you probably will not want to share intimate information with that individual, right? Or that group of individuals. So you may want to look at your friends list and reduce it. Now, Society and culture has grown or evolved such that we want some sort of gratification for the things that we do. That's why we know we take pictures and upload stuff when we travel or we get a new bag or shoe or something that, you know, that, that excites us. We want that collective, you know, um, kudos, you know, we want that like, we want that thumbs up, you know, we want all of those comments. Um, it makes us feel good. It probably makes our friends, you know, feel good that they're interacting with us. Because we're busy, we probably don't get to see them face to face. So I think it's part of our life and our culture and not something that we should, you know, shun away from too much. However, the same way in which, you know, you probably won't go into the middle of a mall and say, hey, it's my birthday, everybody tell me happy birthday. <laughs> you know, you'll probably just do it in a confined space where it's, it's you're surrounded by friends and family. 
and you can control that in your social media space, right? You can sh you, you, know, you can definitely control who your friends network are, uh, your privacy settings. It will be a little bit tedious. I do agree. If you want to be very very particular, uh, set your accounts to private. You know, remove tagging of friends um, and and those type of things, and you can live that particular life and still be able to enjoy the fruits of social media and getting those likes and comments. Yes. Now, I came across a, an app recently called Footprints and Footprints is actually speaking to parents. Now, we have a lot of parents who might have um, newborns or they may have kids and they want to showcase their kids most likely just to their friends and family. Footprints is actually a whole new social media platform that only allows you to add 36 friends. And that number is specific, I don't know why, but mm. it only allows you to add 36 friends. But it still allows you to upload your live events. It allows you to get that comments and, 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 and uh, you know, feelings that you would have you know, gotten from Facebook, but in a very close and re refined space. So you know, uh, that's a nice tip for somebody's parents if they want to continue in that manner. What about apps, messaging apps and so on to handle, you know, transfer of or communication about sensitive information? Because depending on the field that you're in, your career, etc., cetera, um, there's a chance that some of the information that you're sharing with or, or, or communicating with somebody that might be leaked out. But what are some of the things that we can use that can be secure enough for when we, we are having those very, uh, uh, very crucial or um, I can't think of the word right now, but those, those, those very sensitive conversations. Yes, confidential sometimes, yeah. And you know, it doesn't have to be, uh, you know, someone who might be engaging us on a regular basis. Yeah. You and I, we may be asked by our insurance agent to send some sort of identification. Mm. And we might scan our ID or passport and send it to them via WhatsApp, right? I'm sure you probably would have done that. Yeah. Or we might Many have emailed. <laughs> yeah, or we might have emailed. A lot of folks might actually email the document to that individual. So now you have a whole uh, concept of data governance and data privacy because uh, when you send it via WhatsApp or email, does the recipient delete it after they use it, or is it sitting on their computer desktop, you know, perpetually? Do you delete it after you send it and use it, or is it sitting on your desktop or laptop perpetually? And that could be your personal or work device. So I'm, I'm, I'm explaining it like this because the apps, the messaging apps, they may have end-to-end -end encryption and they may have a secure way of transmitting, you know, that, that information from one user to the other. But it's really sometimes the fallout of it. So we still leave the, 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 the sensitive information uh, lodged in the app. If, for example, someone uh, you know gets hold of our phone, whether we lose it, uh, it's stolen, and they're able to log in and you know find that information. Or the more common situation, someone hacks into our email. Because let's face it, not everyone has really strong email passwords or, or, or enter two-factor authentication, right? Um, so cyber safety, we receive so many complaints about, hey, my email is hacked, my social media is hacked. And think about it, if your email is hacked, other than the fact that someone might be sending out fake messages and asking for money, what about the information that you have stored there? Everything I've just spoke about, you know, scans of your passports, scans of your bank statements, hopefully not scans of your credit card, but some of us probably do. So we tend to put so much information into these areas and platforms. Um, and if it does become compromised, then yes, you, you run the risk of identity theft, uh, you know, and, and the whole works. Um, so definitely you can utilize it, but you should delete it. And also ask the person that you send it to, hey, once you've finished using it, printing it, whatever it is, please delete it because we don't want to just sit in there, uh, you know, for someone to, um, who wasn't meant for it to see it. And that's probably an important message for those business owners out there to make sure that when you scan um, documents, because I mean, we often ask for those identifying documents to verify the person is who they are. But, that's right. you know, what are you guys doing when it comes to those things? So, yes, yeah, some, some from very helpful tips um, from you. And I want to thank you so much for being on with us and for sharing these things, because, you know, we often take these things for granted. And it is something that we as people need to really pay attention to as we continue to live more and more of our lives online. You're welcome and happy to be here. Uh, looking forward to joining you again. Have a great day. Certainly. Thank you so much. All right, viewers, we're going to go for a quick break and we'll come back with more conversations after this.